So my name is Tom Nixon. I teach medieval art and architecture at the Courtauld, and I've chosen a selection of my favourite books from the Courtauld Library, which I use for teaching and research. Uh, so the Courtauld was founded in 1932, but a lot of our books are actually much older than the Courtauld itself uh, and have been donated over the years by different scholars and organisations. So this is one of the oldest books in our collection. It was given by our former director, Anthony Blunt, who was very interested in Renaissance and Baroque architectural treatises. And you can see here, it's the third book of Sebastiano Serlio, who was a Venetian architect and scholar, uh, and it was published in Venice in the mid 16th century. And these books were used by architects, but also scholars. And because they were printed uh, in very large numbers, they spread across Europe and so spread uh, Italian Renaissance ideas across Europe, including into Renaissance England. So what I like about this frontispiece, this opening to the book, is a way it's showing this kind of um, ruined landscape of Roman architecture, which is what provides the inspiration for new Renaissance architects in 16th century Italy and beyond. And if we flick through this, we can see that Serlio uh, offers a number of different pieces of advice about using geometry as an architect, how to construct images in perspective. Uh, and then this scene I particularly like. He's interested in theatre as well. And this shows a kind of an ideal theatre set, if you like, for a comedy, uh, for satirical scenes, he says here. Uh, so you can see here, if you imagine a kind of stage set, uh, again with uh, Renaissance architectural details, it looks something like 16th century Venice. So one of the great things about a collection like this is that we can effectively track the formation of art history as, an, as a rigorous scientific discipline, if you like. Um, and uh, what we have here is a publication from the late 18th century, from 1795, by James Murphy, who was an Irish architect who went to Portugal, and was very interested in Portuguese architecture, uh, and particularly Gothic architecture in Portugal. So this is James Murphy's plans, elevations, sections and views of the Church of Bataia in Portugal. Uh, it's really the first rigorous study of a Gothic church and an attempt to understand and classify it in the way that architects and scholars were accustomed to doing with uh, Renaissance and Roman architecture. You can see here it's got this very smart frontispiece or opening page. This is really a kind of a coffee table book. Um, it's not something that you would carry around in your pocket as an architect, but it's something that as a wealthy patron um, or as a rather learned architect you might flick through to show uh, your potential clients or your friends, what you've been up to. And we can see it's got these um, uh, enormous illustrations um, uh, and different plates. And what we can see in these are, first of all, Murphy's incredible draftsmanship. Um, uh, as a trained architect, he was very accustomed to drawing very, very precisely different architectural details. And you can see down here some of the different architect's tools. But also what we can see through the pages of this book are his attempts to order and classify those different architectural details. So he's understanding it uh, in the way that a, uh, a scholar of Roman or Renaissance architecture might think about things. Murphy's interested principally in architecture, but you can see here that he's also interested in uh, other forms of ornamentation and other kind of objects that you might find in the church. And again, you see here, we can imagine this almost like um, a representation of some of the very earliest museums uh, in Britain, where you have this huge array of different objects, all carefully numbered, uh, classified and labelled as a way of understanding this still quite alien form of art. So over on this side of the table, we've got two books that were donated to the Courtauld by the Society of Antiquaries, which was in some ways a kind of predecessor to the Courtauld in the sense that uh, it was a group of scholars who were looking at material culture 
and particularly in England but elsewhere too, from the mid 18th century onwards. And the Society of Antiquaries was originally housed in Somerset House, where we are now, so there's a nice kind of continuity um, with the Courtauld's premises. And what we have here is one of their publications, the Tuesday Monumenta, the, the old monuments really, in which they created in some ways a kind of virtual museum of uh, objects around the country that not everyone, not all their members will be able to see, but by reproducing them and studying them, they made them available to a broader public. This book is currently open on a reproduction of a manuscript that's now in the British Library and that was made in the early 17th century. It's actually a roll, so it's uh, you, you roll it up uh, and it shows the funeral procession of Elizabeth I. Uh, the original version is coloured, this one's just in black and white because it's uh, engraved, but you can see a, an extraordinary procession of dignitaries and clergy who processed through the streets of London for Elizabeth's funeral, complete with flags and horses and other kinds of pomp and circumstance. So the antiquaries were interested principally in English monuments. They were interested in constructing a kind of art history for Britain that would complement the well-established art histories of Italy. But they were also interested in a very wide range of objects from around the world, um, ivories from West Africa, or in this case, a piece of stone taken from pharaonic Egypt and engraved with hieroglyphs. Uh, this at a stage when those hieroglyphs couldn't be read accurately, but they are nonetheless uh, represented with some scientific accuracy in this very beautiful engraving. So a lot of these publications are now available online, but one of the things that I love about teaching with these is that students are always surprised by their enormous scale and also by the smell of these. They have a real kind of special scent that you only get from antiquarian books. Um, this book was published in 1801, it was commissioned by the Society of Antiquaries, um, partly as a way of uh, encouraging interest in British monuments and ensuring their restoration, um, and it's a study by the architect and scholar John Carter of Durham Cathedral. And Carter was an extraordinary draftsman, um, and this volume includes his absolutely beautiful images of the interior of Durham Cathedral, uh, of which we have one open here.